So it's the coldest night of the year and you suddenly realize that your heat isn't working. You go and try to relight the pilot and the pilot won't stay lit. So in this video I'm going to show you uh, how to replace a thermocouple. Uh, these are the tools you're going to need. An adjustable wrench, a lighter, and a screwdriver. So right here we have the thermocouple. And the thermocouple gets connected uh, one end uh, to the gas valve and then the other goes into the main burner. So this is a new thermocouple that we're going to install. And the first thing to do is, uh, in my case, uh, there is no fire, the, the, the light is off. Uh, we're going to take the heat shield out and we're going to try to uh, relight this uh, terminal couple again. And you can see there is no fire right here. Uh, so it's not working. And uh, I set it to pilot. I'm going to hold it down. And while holding it down, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some fire on there. And I'm still holding the pilot button down. Hold it for about 30 seconds to 40 seconds. And then when you let go, if the thermal couple is working, it should stay on. So if I just let it go. You'll see it again, and it's not staying on. So that thermal couple right there is not working. And there's various reasons why it's not working. It could be corrosion, which uh, mostly that's the case. It could be that the uh, different metals inside the thermal couple are uh, welded together because of too much heat. The uh, first thing to do in order to replace the thermal couple is locate your emergency switch and turn it off. I had it on, I just turned it off. Uh, and the next thing, it's very important to turn off the gas valve. Make sure that's on off. And uh, we'll go ahead and start removing the thermal couple. I have an adjustable wrench here and I'm just removing it from the valve end. So I just unscrew it and uh, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove it from the main burner. And the only thing you have to remove here um, is the main burner itself. And there's a little uh, clip right there so I'm going to remove this clip on the main burner and I'm just going to pull out the main burner after I remove this here here we go and you can remove and replace the thermal couple with a burner in there but it's better if you remove the burner like I removed here just wiggle it and then remove it and I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the thermal couple from the housing so I'll just remove this screw here and there's a nut there that attaches the thermal couple to the housing itself, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use an adjustable wrench again and remove it. And again, uh, in my case here, I have to replace my thermal couple probably every uh, two years, and I know it's because of corrosion. And uh, we're going to take a look here at the main burner soon and see that there is signs of corrosion. And what happens is when the tip on the thermal couple is corroded, it stops uh, conducting electricity and therefore uh, shuts off gas uh, to the pilot and to the burners. You got to be careful with that pipe because uh, you don't want any gas leaking. So here's the corrosion that you see here on the main burner and that's what's causing uh, the corrosion here on the tip of the thermal couple. And when that happens, electricity doesn't flow anymore. So once the electricity stops flowing, the valve shuts off gas to all the burners because it doesn't sense electricity from the thermal couple. A good thing to do is once you have this open is to go ahead and vacuum this out. Um, and there was ash, so I'm just going to vacuum them out. And now what I'm going to do with the new thermal couple, I'm going to go ahead and place it back where it was and screw it on there, on the housing itself. And that's what I'm doing here now. And you can see this flex pipe here, this uh, aluminum piping. I'm moving it all around. you got to be careful with these elbows here that gas doesn't leak. Uh, so um, that's one thing I'm going to check for afterwards. Uh, so this is the gas here that just, on this little tube here that just supplies the, the pilot. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in the other end of the thermal couple. Now, it's very important when you plug in the other end of the thermal couple to the valve that you screw it tightly. So what happens is if this end is loose, uh, the valve doesn't see that uh, uh, electric charge coming from the thermal coupler. And as a safety precaution, uh, it shuts off, cuts the gas to all the burners. Uh, that's basically what the thermal couple does. It is a safety mechanism where if it doesn't sense an electric charge coming from the thermal couple, it shuts off everything in order uh, to prevent some kind of explosion because the gas would just keep flowing uh, without there being an actual fire. And that would obviously be very dangerous if that did happen. Uh, an explosion could occur. We're going to go ahead and insert the main burner uh, into the boiler. And there's a way that this goes. So if you look at the back there, it's slotted. And then the front, the front is kind of rounded. So you want to make sure you install it the right way. 
So we'll just get it in here and make sure it's the right way. So now in order to relight the pilot, we're going to turn it from off to pilot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hold the uh, button down and we're going to light her. And while holding the button down, we're going to wait about 30 seconds and then we're going to let go. And hopefully if the new terminal couple is in good shape, the pilot light would stay on. So we'll see. I'm going to let go here in a bit. And really what you want to do is you want to make sure that the tip starts getting uh, a red color. So anywhere from 30 seconds to 45 seconds, I would say. And I'm letting go, and there it is. It's on right there. It's got a nice flame. Uh, if the flame is too big for the pilot, you can adjust it on the valve itself. There's a little screw that you can adjust it. So now, uh, normally I would put the heat shield back in there, but I want to show you what happens if you don't turn off that power in the beginning, that safety switch. Let's say you had the thermostat on, and you went ahead and turned it to on, and the thermostat is going to call for heat right away, and you can actually burn yourself. And there's the fire. So before you turn it from pilot to on, you actually want to put the heat shield back on, which I'll do here. That was just a demonstration. So it's very important that you shut off the uh, main electric switch there, the emergency switch, and you shut off the gas valve um, that you turn it to off. So I'm going to go ahead and put the heat shield. And like I said, you probably want to do this while your uh, valve is still in pilot. So I'll put the nuts back on there. And that's all there is to it. It's a very simple thing. Um, again, these elbows here uh, that supply the gas to the uh, pilot, make sure those are nice and tight. It's not leaking uh, any kind of gas. Uh, we'll screw them back on. And that's about it. And the way the thermal couple works is there's two different metals inside the thermal couple. And if you one metal is hot, one metal is cold, it basically conducts, conducts electricity. And it's basically the uh, seed back effect. So again, all the thermal couple is, is just a safety mechanism. Uh, and uh, inside the thermal couple, there's two uh, different metals. One is the hot end, the other one is the cold end. And uh, this temperature variation creates a uh, flow of electricity between the two different metals. And basically, uh, there's a little magnet that holds uh, the valve open to allow the flow of gas. Uh, this was discovered by Seedback. If you want to get more information, you can look up this diagram here. Um, but uh, that's all a thermal couple is. It's just a safety mechanism. So I hope this video has been informative to you. And if you liked it and it helped you out, please subscribe to my channel. I make videos about anything and everything. And uh, thank you for watching.